Star Citizen Alpha 3.24.1 is officially alive. And even though I have made several testing videos about the Argo Atlas, but CAG has tweaked and improved the Atlas during the PTU cycle. So in this video, I am going to do an official review and testing video for the new Argo Atlas. And first, let's take a look at the new skins. Actually, before we talk about the new skins, there's something we need to talk about. So before the patch went live, me and my friends had a discussion about the price for the Argo Atlas. And here are our conclusions. If CIG really loves us, they will sell the Atlas for 10 US dollars for Warbound and 15 for non Warbound. Or if CIG won a business price, after all, Star Citizen is the business of CIG. They are here to make money, which is understandable. So if they market this as a reasonable business price, they will sell the Atlas for $20 Warbound and $25 for non warbound. But if CIG is greedy, then they will market this for $30 warbound as a very, very greedy price and $35 for non warbound. So that's the greedy price. But guess how much this thing is? They're selling $35 for warbound and $40 for non warbound. And if you're buying these skins, you have to pay extra money for it. So is this a ship? And of course, I bought one Warbound for this because of the lifetime insurance. So that's perhaps one of the best thing if you're buying this for Warbound, which is the lifetime insurance token. But if you're buying this with store credits, that's $40. And now let's talk about the skin. So the Atlas comes with four new skins. The Carbon Black, Iron Sight, Lion Heart, and the last one is the Monsoon, which is a Concierge skin. So this first one we're looking at is the Iron Sight. And this skin is selling for $5. I actually really love this skin. Looks very industrial because this is an industrial tool. Love it. This is one of my favorite skins. And the black one is called Carbon Black. This is actually nice as well, but I do prefer the Chrome one. But the Carbon Black is selling for $6. And the third skin is Monsoon, and this is a concierge skin, which is selling for $5. It's a uh, sky blue. Pretty nice. The last one is Lying Heart. I don't know why they name it Lying Heart, but if you like this sort of a dull yellow color, then this is a pretty nice skin for you. But personally, I don't like it. And this skin is selling for three US dollars. So that's the price and the skin for the Argo Atlas. Now let's do some interesting tests. First of all, I tested in the PTU and it is still holds true that these things cannot be destroyed. So after all those damage, this thing doesn't have even a scratch. So it's indestructible. But I have tested in the PTU that if you are sitting inside the Atlas, someone is shooting at you, you will get hurt. So I'm not going to test that again, but you cannot use this as a bulletproof mech. Another improvement they did for the Argo Atlas is the running speed. If you hold down left shift, let's say walk a little bit faster than before. So without holding left shift, you're walking like this. If you hold shift, you're walking a little faster. This is better because before was a really slow, even if you hold down left shift. The basic function for the Atlas is the right arm has a tracked beam, size one tracked beam, and the left arm, I still couldn't figure out what the function is. It looks like it's something, but I just don't know what it is. The basic function for the Atlas is very simple. Left mouse is to activate the beam. And once you hooked with a box, it's automatically tracked on top of you. So underneath you, you can see a preview. See where do you want to put this box? I have tested this box. You can send it quite far. You can see. Oh, I think this 2SU box, I send it about 120 meters something. 
but I test in the PTU, I can send it to 200 meters. Now I cannot tractor it. I have to walk toward it. Before, you can tractor something really far. There we go. I tractor this box. Next, we're going to test on this little ship, Origin 85X. I'm tractoring it. It's having difficulty tractoring ships, but oh, it's actually moving. You can tractor small, very small ships. You can see this ship has only 23 tons. You can drag it towards you slowly, but the max lift will do this job a lot better. But you can tractor other Atlas unit. You can see I tractor this one, it will just lift on top of me. It does not tell me how much weight this thing has. But there will be no previews. You do not see the previews of the suit. However, you can drag it with you. If you run, it will run with you. So if you want to drop it, simply click right mouse button. One click, it will disconnect the beam. Left click, it will automatically connect the beam and drag it on top of you. Right click you will drop whatever you are tractoring. The Atlas suit not only can tractor boxes and very small ships and vehicles and other Atlas units, it can also tractor missiles. With these missiles, this is a torpedo. You do see a preview right here, if you want to put it right there. Oh, by the way, you can rotate the preview by holding R. Same thing as using tractor beams, you can see. I'm rotating it like this. All right. And it can also tractor components. You can. You do have the preview for it as well. Right here. And another missile. This is a size 4 missile. Okay. This is a FR-76. This is a shield generator. You can tractor it here. Leave it here. And you can also tractor, let me see, personal weapons. Here, I got some guns here. There we go. There's a small FPS weapons. You can also tractor using this. And also a little pistol. Tiny little preview. You can also tractor those decorations. The chair. You can rotate them. You can actually use the Alice to decorate your hanger. Rotating like this. There we go. Another couch, leave it here. Yet another thing what CIG did in the PTU. This is what the patch note says exactly. Collision damage is now prevented from tracked beamed entities. So not only the Atlas, but also the tracked beams and max lift. There will be no collision damage. Which means you cannot use tracked beamed tools to destroy other ships or hurt other people. Okay, so if I shoot it, you can see the little damage part right here. But if I use tractor beam to damage it... Yeah, tried multiple times. I cannot damage this part of the ship. Next thing I want to test is, you can see, when I hover to this little tractor beam, it, there is a yellow silhouette. So I'm pressing the button to unlock the port. It doesn't say anything, you can't see it on my screen. But I'm pressing the button to unlock the port for this atlas. Now I'm getting out. Let me see if I can detach this little tractor beam on the arm or not. Oh, I don't think so. You can see I have a silhouette here, but when I try to detach it, it wouldn't allow me to detach it. Yep. Yeah. I really hope that they can. Ch we can change this to some galling guns or some other things or mining lasers or something we could have multiple functions now let's use the Argo Atlas for what a design to do to move cargoes I'm gonna select the mission that uh, we need to deliver 101 SC of cargo from Seraphim to Kuru L1 it's over 100 SCU so we need to choose a ship oh it's this is not Aesop I remember I read a comment in one of my recent videos the, this viewer said, it is such a sin to take the Freelancer Max out without giving her a nice skin. 
Yeah, I did a video with um, Freelancer Max without putting any skins on it. I will not make that mistake again. So I'm putting one of the best skins for this Freelancer Max. We're going to be doing this mission with this beautiful ship. I think you can open the door while you are on the Atlas. Let me try. Some door is really hard to open. I cannot. You can use the ASOP terminal while riding the Atlas. But this door cannot be opened. Load the Atlas. Ready. Let's go. I'm going to land the ship like this, 90 degree angle with the cargo elevator. I'm not facing my ramp directly at the elevator. There's a reason for it. The reason is because if I'm using the Atlas suit, I want to click it and track it to me and just simply turn left. I can see the cargo grid so I can place my box right there. If I park the ship right behind me, I have to turn 180 degrees to move the cargo. Right now, I just need simply turn 90 degrees to move the cargo. However, the problem of the Atlas is uh, it, it's not very precise. You have to be careful to place the box carefully into the ship and stand a straight line with where you want to place the box. So if I'm not standing on the straight line, I want to place the box right here. You can see it will hit the ship. There won't be any damage though, according to the patch note, but uh, sometimes it will not, the box will not be placed. Oh, I think that there is no cargo grid anymore, so I need to find a new one. Another thing, you can actually use your mouse wheel to choose the position. So I'm scrolling my mouse wheel up. It's a little bit hard to use though. So I'm scroll my mouse wheel up and then scroll it down. Yeah, it's not that easy to use. Scroll up. Let me scroll. Scroll. Yeah, there we go. Scroll. Scroll up. You know what? This this is getting really difficult with Atlas suit. I'm just gonna tractor everything close to me and then use the tractor beam. At least this is faster. If I just simply use the Atlas to move the boxes closer to me, that's it. Really fast. Can uh, do it one after another. Really quick. There we go. I just uh, tracked uh, all of them quickly to me. Now I'm gonna just use the small tractor beam to place them precisely because I really need to uh, make the room. Alright, arrived at uh, Cruel 1 station. I'm going to unload these cargoes. So I'm gonna line up my ship like this 180 degrees, not 90 degrees anymore. And I'm gonna get the ship to the elevator as close as possible. Just close. That's it. Now let's unload these cargoes with the Alice suit. So to unload the cargoes, I found out, is a lot faster than to load with Alice. And then you don't have to be very precise. If you have a bigger hanger, you don't have to be precise at all. See, one click, drag, and one click place. Just stand right in front of the ship. One click, drag, one click, place. One click, drag, one click, place. I think you can also place on top of these boxes, can I? Yes, I can also place on top. This one on top. And that's the last one. On top. There we go. Done. See, unloading like this with Alice suit is uh, so fast. Faster than loading the cargo. Now I'm going to see if I can operate this thing while I'm the Alice suit. Oh, oh, press to start. Oh, I can. <laughs> I can operate this thing while on board the Alice. Just simply one click and click. There's some kind of box. They're giving me different boxes. I think those are the abandoned missions like a while ago. They're still giving me those boxes. So it took me a while to figure out what is wrong with this problem. So be careful if you're stacking multiple missions or if you abandon few missions. Make sure you are picking up the right material for this mission that you're doing. So let's confirm. So transferring to warehouse. Let's see if this will finish the mission or not. Oh yeah, perfect. Contract complete. Done. Very nice. Mission accomplished. And my job is also done. Testing the Argo Atlas in the 3.24.1. Another thing I want to add 
is that the Atlas cannot be used in space. It cannot EVA, which means you cannot track your cargoes in space unless you just stand on top of your ship to track the cargoes. But if you are floating in space, you cannot move the Atlas suit around. You cannot maneuver at all. I've tested that in one of my PTU videos. So I want to add that right here. So that's it. In my opinion, the Atlas suit is a little bit overpriced. However, this is a special little tool or a toy. You not only can use it for cargo, you can also use it for many other different and creative ways. So that's not a bad thing. So now it's your turn. What do you think about this Atlas? Did you get one? And do you think it's worth it? Please leave in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.